right, looks good. So uh, thanks everybody for coming out. This is component-based theming with UI patterns. Hopefully you're in the right place, but if not, I'm sure that's easily remediable. <laughs> Door right there. Um, but uh, let's dive in. So I, uh, I'm excited to be here at the New England Drupal Camp because I am from the New England area. I grew up in Rhode Island. Used to live in Waltham, Massachusetts, Watch City. <laughs> uh, and now I live in the Chicago suburbs and uh, work for a company uh, called uh, HS2 Solutions. And I'm uh, very much into uh, all this component-based theming and style guide driven development stuff that's all the rage these days. Uh, and also love all things Nintendo. So if you want to talk about Super <laughs> Mario Odyssey, uh, track me down later too. And uh, I uh, am on the internet at various places, as people are wont to do these days. So feel free to track me down there as well. And uh, about HS2 Solutions, this is my completely unapproved company info slide with some pros and cons. Uh, pros, we got uh, a couple of nice uh, offices in the Chicago area. I work with a bunch of uh, really smart Drupal folks who uh, can answer my questions when I get stuck. We are always looking for more smart Drupal folks. Uh, you know, if you feel like moving to Chicago. <laughs> um, or looking for uh, people who want great Drupal work done. Uh, and they also sent me here, which is great. Uh, cons, people in the Midwest say pop instead of soda, including some people that I work with, and it's completely unacceptable. <laughs> uh, including my son, actually, which kills me. Now that he, I've caught him saying pop before. It's just, we gotta, we gotta lock that down. Um, and uh, it's not HS1 Solutions, so maybe someday we can become HS1 Solutions. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about the UI Patterns module, um, which uh, really uh, it, it provides a great way for Drupal to talk to your patterns and your components. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to talk a little bit about component-based theming at a high level and also um, how one would do that without the UI Patterns module, which I think will help us kind of understand what some of the advantages um, of this module are. So uh, component-based theming. Uh, in, at a high level, it's the concept of uh, building your site and your theme using modular and reusable elements. So uh, it's often kind of popularized by um, the atomic design concept uh, from Brad Frost. Who's familiar with uh, the concept of atomic design? Cool. Um, so the idea there is building a design system rather than a series of pages. So not getting a mock-up and building this page and then building this page, even though those two pages might have a lot in common. Instead, breaking down the component parts into their smallest atomic elements and then using them to build larger things um, all the way through to, you know, reusable page templates. Um, and I think in the Drupal community uh, today as well, oftentimes people associate component-based theming with Pattern Lab, which is a, 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 pattern la a pattern library or living style guide tool. Um, and I often use Pattern Lab as well. But this general concept applies beyond Pattern Lab or, or whatever uh, tool you might use for a, a living style guide. It also applies if you're not using uh, a living style guide or some sort of external pattern library. You can still break things down into these smaller parts just in your regular theme building as well. So uh, why would somebody do this? What are the advantages here? Got some ice there in that sip. Um, so, uh, you know, warning. So uh, efficient reuse is a big part of it. So if you uh, build these components, um, you can reuse them in a consistent way, right at once, use it in a bunch of different places, um, including you know, smaller pieces in larger components. Um, you can reuse them within the scope of a single project, within, uh, across other projects, or even if your uh, pattern library is an external dependency to your theme, it might even be outside of Drupal that you're uh, using these things in different contexts. It can give you nice, uh, clearly isolated chunks of code, especially if you're following some sort of uh, structure naming convention like uh, BEM, block element modifier. So it's really easy to see what your component is, what the sub-elements are inside of it, and kind of understand what relates to what. Also, scope down your styling so that it just relates to that component and doesn't bleed out to other things. Um, 
It provides some options as far as decoupling front end and back end development. Um, so theming doesn't have to come at the end after everything's uh, been built. So you can uh, define how these components look and feel and behave in isolation before maybe even the underlying functionality exists. Learn some lessons there, experiment, prototype. Um, and yes, often this is used uh, in combination with some sort of living style guide or pattern library, which can really help uh, also just as documentation and uh, improve coordination between uh, different groups. So designers and developers, but also developers and developers, and that you know, your front end developers might define things in your pattern library and provide uh, clear guidance as to how your back end developers would integrate with that component or what sort of markup they need to produce to make sure the component looks like it does in your style guide. It's also great for prototyping in that you can uh, experiment there uh, with uh, kind of low effort and low risk and see how different combinations of things would look, different layouts, and not having to uh, make Drupal aware of that until you're a little bit more confident that that's the right direction. So now, let's look at uh, component-based theming without UI patterns. Um, so before this module exist, existed, this was uh, an approach um, that was used to um, basically make Drupal aware of these components that live in your component library. Um, and something that I've done on projects. Um, so we're going to look at this uh, component here. It's from uh, Foundation's uh, building block kits, the marketing building block kit in this case. Um, just gave, it, it provides us with some nice uh, components here to use as examples. Um, it has an image, uh, a header, a subheader, and a button. Looks pretty nice. So, uh, talking about the component itself. So, um, I'm not going to like talk specifically about Pattern Lab or any particular Pattern Library, although I do often use Pattern Lab and we'll reference it here and there. But the basic idea is that uh, it doesn't matter if you're using Pattern Lab or some other Pattern Library or Style Guide, or even if this is just uh, these are components within your theme. Just the basic idea that we're thinking of is that there is a place where your patterns live, and then in there, there are subdirectories for each of the different components that have all the things that your component needs, everything that you need to be able to render this thing. So in this particular case, it's not all that complicated. We have uh, a twig template, uh, a SAS partial, and we're also generating a, a CSS file with the individual CSS for this thing. Um, you might also have some JavaScript that's specific to this component. <laughs> other assets like images or um, SVGs or something. Or if your pattern library, like Pattern Lab obviously does this, um, if you have data that you want to pass in uh, for you know, example renderings of this component, that might live there too. But uh, everything all in one place that lets you make this thing. And then for this example, we'll just take a quick look at the markup and styles for this. <coughs> So um, again, this is from the foundation uh, building blocks. Um, so in the, the markup, we see it doesn't quite follow like a, exactly a BEM syntax, but we can still see the general structure of it and the class naming so that we have the overall component and then the sub elements inside of it. And then there are twig variables here for those four things that we list out, the image, the header, subheader, and the button. So that's the general structure there. The styles, uh, you know, the specifics here are probably a little bit less important. It makes the thing look like the component that we saw there. Um, but you can still, in general, see that the, the classes and the general structure and the partial here follows the markup that we see on the left-hand side. So now, uh, so we have this defined in our pattern library, and we're able to, outside of Drupal, create something that looks like this. So the question is, how are we going to get Drupal to be aware of it? So uh, the approach here is performing mapping in your Twig templates to be able to pass that data from Drupal over to your components. So um, there's a lot of different uh, ways you could structure this. Um, you know, different like uh, display modes or you know content types or anything like that. In this particular example, we're using a paragraph. Um, 
the general idea is the same though. So we have a, a paragraph type for this marketing content section component. And then here in that template suggestion, we're using Twig's uh, include statement. And that lets us reference the template in our pattern library that we saw before, this guy. And it pulls in that template and then uh, flows through the content for those variables. There's also uh, extends and embed. Uh, the difference there, so include just kind of takes that template wholesale. Those allow you to redefine blocks within that template. Um, so it gives you some options for reuse. Um, include gets the job done here in this particular case. Then we see the path in the include statement. There's that at marketing uh, portion in the beginning. That's a twig namespace that uses the uh, component libraries module. I think that it's just components, but um, what that module lets you do is define a twig namespace in your theme. You define them in your themes info.yaml file. And it does a couple things. One is it provides a little shortcut to that path where the, um, your components live. So there's a, you know, this path to the marketing components. You can just do at marketing and not type out the full path. But probably the more important thing is that by default, Drupal will just look at its templates directory for templates, which makes sense because they're called templates. Um, but when you define a Twig namespace, you can also make Drupal aware of uh, templates that live somewhere else other than your template directory. So if you had uh, Pattern Lab, for example, living somewhere else, that's how you could say Drupal actually also go out here and I want you to be able to use these templates as well. Any attached library one, is that related to the rest of this? Yeah, so the, I was gonna get to that. So the attached library, so you might have uh, certain assets, like in this case, um, this CSS file, that whenever this pattern loads, you want that to load as well. Um, a simple example might be JavaScript. So you might have some JavaScript that, uh, you know, is related to the interactivity of this component, or every time this component loads, you want this JavaScript to exist. So you could do that with a tap library. There's obviously other ways you could do it. You could uh, pre-process to add it. It could be added more globally in your theme. But, um, so in this case, it's just loading the, the CSS. Probably the more common example would be the JavaScript. And the, the biggest reason that I'm including it here is to provide a parallel to something that we're going to look at when we get into UI patterns. Does that answer your question? Cool. Okay. Um, so then we also have uh, the mapping that we're doing there. So we say with, and then it's a list of the variables that are in your Twig template. Same four things that we saw before. And then uh, here we're passing along uh, the Drupal variables as well. So. For this paragraph type that we created, it's pretty simple and straightforward. We have fields related to um, those individual things, something for the image, the header, the subheader, and we just do content, dots, and then the machine name of the field. Pretty straightforward. And then when Drupal renders this, it's gonna pass in that data, and you get you know, your component that looks like this, but with the data that's specified on that node in that paragraph. So, uh, that is uh, pretty straightforward and definitely works. But as you kind of scale this out, uh, from my experience, and do more of it, um, there are some challenges. So uh, taking the card example in the, the lower right there, um, so this is just an example card component. If you're trying to do something, uh, if you're trying to get individual pieces of data and maybe it's not mapped directly to fields like that, like for example, trying to get the uh, image source, the path to an image, or the alt tags, you have to know some Drupal specific things like that file URL uh, function, or have to understand a little bit about where you would go in the render array to get at the alt tag, for example. Or even something just as simple as uh, the title of a node is called label. <laughs> Hooray for Drupal! <laughs> um, so, it can require quite a bit of debugging, especially the more complicated your components are and uh, the uh, you know, more complex mappings you have to do. Um, so it's hard for somebody who might not be as familiar with that structure. But then also, as you get comfortable doing that, uh, it's pretty easy to try to 
to really strip things down to your perfect component with no extra wrapping divs and stuff that Drupal adds, just exactly what you want from your pattern library. Um, and once you have the power to do that, what you might realize is that you're stripping away things that Drupal needs and breaking things like quick edit or panels in place editor or Lord knows what else. Um, and there's also the issue that the, this card.twig template, for example, in this case, is kind of a black box to Drupal, or also the other way around, that uh, the card, card.twig, really doesn't know anything about how it's being used. It do really doesn't know anything about Drupal at all. So um, you can't pre-process. Um, there's some issues with caching, potentially, depending on how you pass uh, data in there, it might not invalidate the cache how you expect it to. Um, but really, what what it all comes down to is that um, these two things don't really know about each other. I see a lot of nods over there and uh, <laughs> similar sympathies. So uh, that gets us to uh, the UI patterns module. So now that we took a, a look at you know how one would do this without UI patterns, we can look at what UI patterns offers and what the advantage is there. So the, the way that I like to think about UI patterns is, is that it you know, lets you define and manage these components in a way that Drupal understands. It gets Drupal back in the loop on uh, this metadata definition and the mapping. So you define UI patterns and there are Drupal plugins at the end of the day. And uh, once you've defined your patterns, it lets you use these patterns with component-friendly modules. Um, so things like views and field groups and basically anywhere that you can render, uh, you have access to a layout, um, you can use these patterns as well. So things like panels and paragraphs and all that good stuff. And then it also lets you configure those mappings in Drupal's UI rather than doing it in a Twig template. There's an optional uh, pattern library module that um, shows all of your patterns and, and examples of what they look like. The maintainers, which I think is a pretty fair representation, describe it as like a poor man's pattern lab. Um, and then uh, it also lets Drupal, it, you know, it, it brings Drupal in the loop here. So you can do some pre-processing. Uh, you can render these things programmatically. Um, but yeah, really the value that it adds is that it's something in the middle that helps, you know, Drupalize and translate between Drupal and your components, which the Twig template alone isn't necessarily going to do for you. So uh, this is from the project page. Um, helpful to take a, uh, maybe a quick look to kind of understand the structure, and we'll look at all the pieces of it. But um, so your the best way to think of it is that your pattern library, you know live somewhere externally, like Pattern Lab or Fractal or, or any similar tool like that. Or uh, over here, where it says like YAML or UI patterns, um, actually kind of think of, about that as if the, you know, these patterns just lived in your theme as well. So they can just live in your Drupal theme too. And then you define the patterns to make them available to the UI patterns module. And then they have uh, what they call uh, integration modules that make these patterns available different places in the UI. And then you can do all those mappings and everything, and it just all gets spit out to the theme layer, as you would expect. So uh, looking at the same component, this is an example of how it might be represented in that uh, patterns library page. It's just slash patterns. Um, so you have the name of your pattern, a description, and then a list of uh, the fields that are defined in the pattern, along with some metadata. So you can give it a label, a type, which is really mostly just used for documentation purposes, and a description. And then you have a preview of your pattern uh, with all the data that you define to, to pass into it for that example. And now let's look at how you actually go and define the pattern. So. Um, you know, a good guess in the Drupal 8 world is it probably in a YAML file somewhere. Um, and in this case, it is. So uh, we'll dive into the specifics of it. But so you can have uh, multiple patterns live in a single YAML file, or you can have a YAML file per pattern, which is my personal preference. Um, but either works. 
So then there's a, a ID or machine name for the pattern itself. So here we're calling it marketing site content section. And then the label and description that we saw in the patterns page. And then you define all of your fields. And you know, as you might expect, it's pretty much all the stuff that you saw on the patterns page. So the, the field has an ID. You can define a type, label, and description. A lot of that stuff is optional. Um, and then what you provide for the preview is what's going to be passed in as example data on that patterns page. So you know it might just be text. Here there's image markup uh, that I'm passing through. We'll look at an example later. It's actually possible to render another pattern as the preview if you're doing some uh, nesting of patterns here. So you define all your fields there. And then uh, this kind of goes back to uh, the attached library thing that we looked at earlier. Yes? Did you say that this was necessary with the um, patterns module, or this is in addition if you wanted to take it further? So if you want uh, there to be a pattern that you can use in Drupal, you have to do this in the, the YAML file. Yeah. So um, I don't know if it's exactly what you're getting at, but a, a question. I mean, a patterns module. You said it had there's like contrib modules and stuff like that. Yep. So I, I haven't looked at it. We're still in seven. Yep. Um, so I thought that there would be aspects of the patterns module that we could utilize on the front end, but when you use the patterns module, you still need to go into the the, the twig and the YAML and, and all of that too, right? Yes, yeah, so the, the, the module is called the UI Patterns, that's, that's the name of the module. And uh, so, yeah, to actually have your own patterns that you can use along with this module, you do have to uh, define things in this YAML file. Yep. Um, so then there's also these last uh, two uh, options are, are kind of cool tricks. So. Going back to the attach library thing that we talked about before. Um, well, actually, that's the last one, so why not? Um, the, you can define libraries in your definition for the pattern. So this just means that these assets are going to be loaded whenever the pattern is loaded. Um, in this case, we have the CSS uh, file for this component. Again, the more common example is probably JavaScript that's going to be specific to this component. And then there's the use statement. So the, um, all of your patterns are going to get default uh, template suggestions as well. So we'll talk more about that in a second. But if you want to use that default suggestion and put markup in there, you can do that. But if you are using an external pattern library like Pattern Lab and the template already exists, you can just use this statement to say, actually, when you render this pattern, just go out here. This is where my template exists. I just want you to go ahead and use that. And it can also use your twig namespaces and, and all that good stuff. So um, if you already have patterns that you're trying to integrate with, you don't necessarily have to create Drupal-specific templates, which is nice. So yeah, about the template suggestions, uh, there are default template suggestions that exist. This is an example of what that suggestion would be uh, for this pattern. So if that whole concept of use and mapping into something that already exists doesn't really work for your use, use case, you can do this. You can put the actual uh, markup for your pattern right here if you want. Um, you could also include another twig template if you wanted to include or uh, embed it. Um, if you are doing that, I'd probably wonder like why wouldn't you just use that use statement in that case, but it is possible. And then uh, you can also do some pre-processing. So uh, you can give yourself self additional template suggestions, maybe based on the context. So maybe if it's being used in the view, you want a slightly different suggestion. So uh, we have now defined this thing, and it's showing up in that pattern library page. Um, so to, to go back to your question about uh, you know, what do we have to define to work with this, um, if you just turn on the module and look at the patterns library page, there's nothing there until you define the patterns that you want to see. Um, so we have this thing. The question again is how do we get Drupal's, Drupal to talk to it and get Drupal's data into it? Um, and I find uh, both from my experience uh, getting familiar with this module and uh, talking to people who've uh, used it for the first time, 
this seems to be the piece that people get tripped up on. And I get it. It's uh, a little confusing when you first get into it. So how do you expose these patterns in Drupal and, and feed your data into it? So again, there are those integration modules. And this is basically just uh, all the places that you want patterns to be exposed in the UI. Um, there's four of them. There's UI patterns, layout. So anywhere that you can expose a layout in, in 8.3 using layout discovery, uh, that would be. Um, the patterns will show up in the list there. UI patterns views is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to render a pattern in a view, you would enable that. So it, it'll be a views row style. Uh, the last two I don't use quite as much, but there's UI patterns display suite, which makes the patterns available uh, for display suite field templates if you're a display suite user. And then field group, that's also pretty self-explanatory. So uh, if you're using field groups, you can define a pattern for your field group and map all the fields there. So if you're, uh, maybe you uh, are trying to set up this module and, and found your way to this, uh, this video online or something, uh, if you're looking for a place to start, here's what I would recommend. Uh, in 8.3 and above, enable field layout, and then enable the UI patterns layout module and that will make these patterns available anywhere that you uh, can uh, render layouts in Drupal. Um, and that's probably going to be a good starting point for you. And then also if you're looking for uh, you know, a simple way to, to set up an example and are familiar with using the paragraphs module, uh, paragraphs can be a pretty uh, component friendly option that you can create your paragraph type and map it with a pattern and see how that looks. And, That'll just be a good starting point to, so you can kind of uh, understand how this all works together and then that'll hopefully help you understand the other cases that might be a little bit more specific to what you're trying to build or just how you would use some of these other options. So uh, we have, uh, again, in this case, a paragraph uh, type for this component, the same sort of fields that we've been looking at in all the other examples. And now that we have that up on its feet, we go to the Manage Display tab. And then under Layout Settings, again, we have uh, the uh, UI Patterns Layout module enabled and Field Layout enabled so that we have a layout here. And then under Select the Layout, we have Layouts and then also a list of all of our patterns. So we just pick the pattern that we want to use, in this case, Marketing Site Content Section. There's also this Pattern Settings option. And the only thing that's there right now is if you want to use the default field wrappers for your content or if you just want to pass along only the content itself. So that lets you strip out some of that, uh, that those wrapping divs and extra markup, which is nice. In the future, I believe they're going to change this to be something that you can set on a field-by-field -field basis. Uh, initially, that didn't seem necessary to me, but as I've used it more, it would be really nice to be able to, to make that choice depending on uh, what you're trying to render. Does it play well with the fences module? I have not done that, uh, I've not tried that myself. Um, but does Fences use layouts? No, it has a custom field template and then it lets you choose in the UI um, what wrapper to use, what classes to add. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, I haven't used that, so I'm not sure. It might be something where there might have to be uh, um, a particular extension to work with Fences. I don't know. Worth looking into, though. Um, okay, so now that we've selected our layout, then we get access to um, take our fields from the paragraph and map them to the field in our pattern. Um, so here we're just saying everything's kind of named the same because we created the fields for this paragraph for this particular purpose, but we take image and put it in an image and header and put it in header, etc. And then uh, now, whenever we render that pattern, it is going to look like uh, the component that we expect. Um, I'll actually take a quick second to show that in the UI, because I think that can be helpful just to ingrain that a little bit. And we'll, uh, if, if we have time, we'll also look at some other examples here. But just to step through that again, um, so we have our marketing site content section paragraph here. and all of our fields. And if we go to Manage Display, so it's just down here under Layout Settings. And this is where we can pick from all of our patterns. Um, 
And then, so before we would have just had the fields listed out here, but then after we do that, we have uh, all of the fields that are in our pattern, and we can just drag and drop them. So if we wanted to switch, you know, the image into subheader, which doesn't make a lot of sense, um, we could do that. And we'll look at um, some of the uh, other UIs for, for setting up with the other integration modules in a second. And um, some of you set up alternative displays. Mm -hmm. Each has its own little layout. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so. Um, Uh, you know, this is a little demo profile. I don't have too much going here, but if we go uh, do, 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 under a content type and we have the you know default and teaser displays, um, it really just comes down to where layouts are exposed. So if that display mode can have a layout, you can have your pattern, and then uh, this will actually be a good example of just showing what that looks like. So when you pick the pattern and save it, so now we just see the fields from the pattern, and here are your fields from the content type. You can just drop them into where they belong. Okay. Back to slides. Um, okay, so uh, we'll go into a few things beyond just that kind of basic configuration to, to look at a few other things that this module can do for us. So here we're just going to look at another pattern from these foundation building blocks. Um, it's just a testimonial. It has uh, a, a quote and then a thumbnail image and uh, some attribution, name, company, title, etc. So this is what it would look like in the uh, patterns page. So let's look quickly at if we're going to use this in a view using the UI patterns views module. So when that's enabled, um, when you select the views row styling, in addition to content and field, you now have pattern. So if you pick pattern, um, then you'll go to the settings after that where you can pick your pattern. And then it's you know based on what we saw before, it's probably along the lines of what you'd expect. You see all of the fields that are defined in your view. And then there's the destination uh, where you specify um, what field in your pattern you want that data to go into. And then after you do that, you'll see in your view um, all of the rows rendered using this pattern, which is awesome. And then uh, field group, we'll look at that just to see how that shows up in the UI, because some of each of these are maybe a little bit different. Same basic idea, but so if we, we created a field group for uh, our, a quote here, uh, put all the fields underneath it, and then specify a format of pattern. When we go into the settings, here we can pick our pattern. It's the testimonial block vertical in this case. And same sort of deal. For each of our fields, we specify the field in the pattern that we want that to flow into. And then uh, here's just an example of the display suite. This is probably the one that I've used the least. Uh, so this is actually just an example from the UI patterns documentation. Um, but for uh, a link field, um, you can specify a pattern in this case where we want a link to render as a button. So for all the components of the link field, URL, title, all that thing, you map them to the destination in your pattern fields. Some other things that UI patterns can do for you. So you can also render your patterns using a twig function. So here's a couple of examples of, of that, again, with the same testimonial um, component. So the top one uh, is just a, a case where we're passing through uh, static content. So you just say pattern, and you provide the ID of your pattern, and then a list of all the fields and the content that you want to pass through. And then uh, also obviously it can work with dynamic content. So if you're in a template that has access to these content variables, um, you can just pass them along. Not really all that different from what you did uh, in the twig mapping as well. Um, however, uh, this is all kind of flowing through Drupal a little bit more than it does in that twig case. 
And then you can also render patterns programmatically. So this is something that I also haven't done a ton of, um, but I did work up this example uh, just to get it on its feet. So you know you have this uh, array structure here where you provide uh, a type of pattern, the ID of the pattern, and then unsurprisingly it is uh, your uh, listing of all of the fields again and the content that you want to pass through. And then you can render it. So it's definitely nice to have some, uh, some options there as far as you know, how you might want to render these patterns out. So some things uh, that as you work with this module more, you might try to do, uh, you know, especially if you're trying to um, take things that already exist in your pattern library and, and make them available to Drupal. But also questions I've, I've heard people ask um, as they experiment with this quite a bit. So what about a sub-pattern? Here's another um, one of the building block components. Um, it's like a marketing site feature section and it has a uh, header, a subheader, and then each of those individual features that have a little icon and then a title and a description. So the feature is actually really its own component and there's four of them. Um, so how would we do that? So it, it's not uh, currently formally supported in the module, but there are ways to do something like this. So we would define the uh, feature, the, you know, the uh, this down here as its own pattern as well and then we define a pattern for the entire thing the marketing site feature section and then it's possible to achieve this using nested paragraphs if paragraphs are something that you're using so we would have um, the paragraph itself that has a headline and a subheadline and then a uh, paragraph entity reference that allows you to add any number of these marketing site features and there's going to be, be the overall pattern for that that you create and do the mappings. And then your marketing site feature paragraph also has its own pattern that it maps to be able to render this thing. So you just have your icon class, title, and description. So when that renders out, it gives you this guy. But because you have the paragraphs nested inside of it, at the end of the day, you're going to get this. And then also on top of that, something that I, I kind of me mentioned in passing before, um, in the definition of your pattern, uh, where you have the preview for the pattern, so you're passing in data there, it is possible to render a pattern there. So again, thinking back to this guy, when I had this on my pattern page the first time I tried to do this, I'm like, how, how exactly do I do all this? How do I get all this stuff in uh, my YAML file, and the first thing I did was actually just have a big block of markup. Um, it ended up looking how I wanted it to, but it felt ugly and dirty. Um, and as it turns out, you can render patterns here. So because we have a pattern for the marketing site feature, you can say type of pattern and then list out all the fields. Um, so it's a little bit cleaner to do it that way. And that also seems to imply that like a lot of the groundwork for this exists in the module. Um, it just seems like... Uh, it's kind of going to be a complicated UI problem to solve to be able to define patterns that have patterns inside of them and do the mappings of patterns inside of patterns. Patterns all the way down. Uh, so then also the concept of like variance and pattern variations, um, that is something that they have on the roadmap. I think there might actually be some uh, early attempts at it in the issue queue, if I remember correctly. Um, but uh, this is a situation where just some of the things that you can do in your twig template might help you out, depending on what you're looking to do. So again, here, the, um, the feature just really has this different icon class. So that's really the thing that varies from a class by class basis. So it's actually possible to just create a field that has a list of those things. So you can, when you're creating a paragraph, just select the variation there. So that can definitely work, but it kind of depends on what you want to do. Uh, the, the issues there are that uh, if you define that in the pattern, it does get exposed in the UI, so if you don't want that variation to be exposed in the UI, there's really no way around that that I'm aware of. And then also, uh, there isn't a way in the patterns page to show all the variations of a pattern there. I still use 
Pattern Lab alongside UI patterns, so I, I handle the, the variants in Pattern Lab. We'll talk in a second about why uh, I think that can make sense using Pattern Lab alongside this, even though we do get our, our poor man's Pattern Lab page. Uh, actually, that's what we're getting into now. So, talking a little bit about uh, what the workflow for this could be, um, especially thinking about the idea of using this alongside a, a pattern library like Pattern Lab. And, and if the UI Patterns module and that Patterns page gives you what you need, that's definitely great. Um, but I do use this alongside Pattern Lab. And uh, uh, a workflow that I think could work nicely here is that the component kind of starts its life in the Pattern Library or Pattern Lab. So you can develop something that doesn't exist in Drupal yet. Um, it probably would be a good home to work with smaller subcomponents, the variants that we talked about, and definitely would be the place to do like larger scale prototyping of, of full page templates and things like that. Um, and then there might come a point where your component is ready to graduate to becoming a, a UI pattern. So the idea there is that um, in defining it in, uh, as a pattern with the UI patterns module, A, it makes it available to the module and to Drupal, but also it's kind of another level of documentation. So even just defining that YAML file gives you some documentation about what's expected uh, to be passed into that component, and there's also the patterns page as well. So it, it's really kind of saying, here is this, this component that, that we have in our pattern library, and it's ready to be used in Drupal in this specific way. Um, and I think that has some, some major advantages, especially with some of the challenges that I've seen, you know, trying to get back-end to integrate in with some of these front-end components. And just the other thing that I, I would say related to that and kind of from experience working with this, and, and also even just in general with the non-UI patterns uh, version of, of mapping into these components, is that there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Um, even just with UI patterns, you know, we've seen all those different integration modules that expose places in the UI where you can do these mappings. Um, you can uh, render these patterns programmatically and with a twig function. So I'm not necessarily saying that you have to just pick one thing and that's, that's all that you do, but you really should kind of find a set of approaches that you're gonna use and try to settle on that document them pretty clearly, um, it'll, it'll definitely save some headaches just because there are really so many different ways you can, you can go about this. Um, and then also, um, experimenting with this module and, and trying to follow along and play along at home. Um, I have been working on a, a contributed theme that uses UI patterns. Um, probably unsurprisingly, given all the examples that we had, uh, it's a theme called Foundation Patterns, and uh, it's uh, implementing those foundation building blocks that we've been talking about. So uh, this kind of exists for a couple of reasons. One, I'm hoping that uh, for people who use Foundation, these might be useful components um, to be able to get out of the box. But also, you know, I'm, I'm really looking this, at this from the perspective of how would it work to use this concept of UI patterns in a contributed theme? And how far, how far can we take this? Um, so there is the foundation patterns theme, and uh, the theme itself is really unop unopinionated about how the patterns are used. It just makes these patterns available. So you install the theme, it's a sub-theme of Zerg Foundation, and uh, once you have it installed, all these patterns exist, but it's not telling you how you would use them. So if you have existing data uh, that you want to map into the patterns, you can do that. Um, you, you can pick whether or not you want to use them in views or if you want to use them with display modes of a content type or all that stuff. Uh, however, uh, I also created a configuration module uh, that could be used alongside this. It's, kind of, it's definitely inspired by um, uh, the, some of the way that the bootstrap paragraphs module um, is implemented. Um, so it provides a lot of prepackaged paragraph types that can jumpstart the use of the theme. So you enable this module, and there are paragraph types for all of the patterns and all of the components. So this will allow you to just turn this on, and then you can uh, add to uh, you know, a content type, for example, in any reference field, 
specify the paragraph type you want to use, and you'll have that component that you can just use there. Um, it also lets you, uh, like, uh, you know, you can have these fields and you can use within panels and all that sort of good stuff. So we can take uh, a little bit of a look at exactly how that's structured and, and how some of that comes together. Um, are you going to talk about how this gets over the quick edit and IPE? Yeah. Yeah, and in fact, if people have questions, we can talk about this before we dig around in, in the theme. But um, so, you know, <laughs> I don't know that I have uh, much more of an answer aside from the fact that it it plays nicely th with those and doesn't cause problems. So, um, yeah, I, I, again, I don't know if I have the, the, the exact right example there. I would imagine that you still can, like, strip you still have the ability to strip things down to their, you know, their barest elements, so you might be pulling some of those things out. But the fact that this, uh, that Drupal is aware of all of these things and it, it is a Drupal plugin, it doesn't uh, cause those errors that I've seen before when you just do the twig mapping. Um, I, I know that, it, it, you know, I, I wish I had a, like a more technical answer to as why that's the case, but. Any other questions? Yeah. How, how does this play with components that have quasi fields defined that are really populated via Ajax or some other front end technology? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, we're into questions, so let's just rock with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Got to be agile. Um, so. I guess we can talk more about your specific case. So if, if it's really something that is on the front end, um, does Drupal know about it at all? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. So if, it, if the answer is not, then I, I don't think there is uh, anything that UI patterns can do for you, unless maybe you gave like a placeholder for it. Um, but if it, if it is something that Drupal knows about, uh, the example that comes to mind is uh, for uh, a pattern that we implemented in UI patterns on a, pro a past project. We had um, like a geo-aware portion of it so that we needed to render a distance. Mm -hmm. And that field uh, didn't, at least didn't exist in the UI, for example. Um, so getting that to work can be tricky. What we actually ended up doing in that case is like creating a pseudo field as a home for it. Um, so I, I don't know if that would yeah, that's uh, apply I guess to you. Yeah, that's kind of what I was looking, looking for, how you may have done that. That sounds like a, some kind of a pseudo field, maybe a placeholder. Yep. And you just inject the content in there. Yep. Yeah, and I think the same thing uh, might also apply on the front end uh, for the JavaScript stuff. It just has to have a place to land. Yes? This may be the same question. I have two parts to it. It's fine. We are in questions. Fire, t take okay. them all. <laughs> so... Um, are you basically having site builders working with this, not the common editor, like the non-tech person? Are they the ones who are choosing, let's say it's like chosen at the, the uh, content level, uh, content type level, that type of a thing, right, since the site builder? So if that's the case, I don't understand why, I don't understand the benefit of using paragraphs with, uh, with this pattern thing the way that I use paragraphs, again, and I'm in seven, is that they're already styled. They already look like a certain thing. Uh, I use classy um, paragraphs so that they have some options of, you know, background colors or something like that. But so it's like, so I don't, I don't get the benefit, the added benefit of the two together. How are you making that more of a benefit? Yeah. So what I would say to that, uh, A, is uh, if paragraphs or the way that I use paragraphs uh, doesn't align with what you're trying to do, um, don't get wrapped up on that. This is not you know, I, something that in any I way depends on paragraphs. I'm in my own little silos, so yeah. I'm really interested in what, you know, something that I haven't seen. Yeah. So uh, I think um, in your case, and again, it, it, especially if what you have works and it's easy for you to get the classes and the markup and to force things to look how you want it to look, then maybe you don't need this. Uh, but I think that 
for maybe more complicated uh, components with uh, kind of larger structure. It might not be as easy to get the right classes in there, especially if it's like nested deep inside of a, a, a component. If you have um, JavaScript uh, that is specific to the component, like um, if you find yourself in a situation where you have to create a lot of custom templates to be able to get the markup and classes to render how you want to, or do a lot of editing in the UI to get the classes in there. Basically, if, if the hard part is getting Drupal to use all the markup classes in JavaScript that you, you want, then I think this is a place where it might help because you can have your component that already exists and has all the markup and structure that you want and then you can say, Drupal, just plug this stuff into it. Okay. If that's not a problem for you, then, then maybe um, it, no, it's not necessary, it doesn't fit with your yeah, workflow. Yeah, no, kind of uh, brought up a good point about how there's so much, there's so much to configure. Yeah. Like I'm using uh, uh, Display Speed and the Expert um, templates and, and a lot of configuring just to accomplish something. So yep. this might be time saver. Maybe? Yep, exactly, yeah. I have found that um, it's partially uh, UI patterns and I think it's also partially some of the changes that have made, been made in Drupal 8.3 uh, regarding layouts. I found that I've been able to kind of strip away some of the modules that I've used in the past. Like a, it's not as necessary to use um, Display Suite uh, anymore for the things that I'm trying to do. Um, and also uh, I do use paragraphs more and that is more of like, in some cases, more of a trade uh, for f uh, field groups or field collections. But. So it comes down to reusability and don't repeat yourself, right? Yep. Exactly. Yes, you can do this by, by a lot of configuration in the UI, but if you're doing that same configuration over and over and over again, you want to find a way to do it. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a really good point. Yeah, and so, he, like, this is a... Export the paragraphs, you, everything doesn't come over that, that, you, that you built, but that you configured, not everything, um, unfortunately, that, that I built in, in the um, display suite, like all those little nuances, <coughs> the expert, Yep. Template doesn't come over, and I'm redoing them. They're stored in different places, so they don't get exported in paragraph. Huh? Because they're stored in different places. Yes, yes, exactly. So this would satisfy that. Is this would limit the I think that might be more of a like Drupal 8 configuration management thing, where uh, I think configuration management might be a little bit better at that in Drupal 8, like getting all of the configuration options okay. than features in seven, but. for front-end developers to get into confidently using, say, the UI patterns or pattern lab? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, I would say that there is a decent learning curve for this. I would also say that that same learning curve exists for doing the mapping in twig templates that we looked at in the beginning. So it's more the concept of um, having Drupal integrate with external patterns from a pattern library that I think the learning curve exists for. Um, but it, it, it's definitely a real thing. <laughs> yep. um, and yeah, in, in general, you know, part of it comes down to like, uh, is the way that you're, you're building your front end components are you doing it outside of Drupal in a pattern library? Um, if that's working for your team and uh, you know providing advantages, it's definitely a you know a hip popular thing to do these days. Uh, but if you are doing that, I think something like this might help. If you're not, um, then it might not have uh, the same advantages. And and the the other thing, kind of going back to the like, is it necessary to do this? And the whole kind of write once, reuse everywhere. Like if you find yourself that you have to like. I created this new thing, I have to just create another template that's basically the same template that already exists, but it's at a different suggestion, or we have to use this template suggestion and reference this thing that already exists. Um, something like UI patterns can probably do it a little bit more efficiently. So it sounds like if you're dealing with a, a site or a build that needs to scale, it doesn't seem like to go ahead and invest in to in it. UI patterns and use, we'd say, or say if you're just dealing with a little bit small brochureware and just maybe not worry about it. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know that that statement about it. You know, if it's a site that needs to scale, but uh, but I, I would agree with the statement. Like, if you have a simple, you know, brochure site with a simple retheme, maybe this is overkill. Okay. Yeah. Have you run into any issues with integrating contrib modules that provide component-like things? Like, say, sign-up module provides like a sign-up block or something like that, and you need it to look like a certain component. Did you run into any problems integrating that with the patterns and the pattern line? Yes, the question was uh, integrating with you know certain contrib modules. Um, I wish I repeated all the questions for the video, but here we are. <laughs> um, so, uh, my short answer is that I find that in a lot of places, as long as you can expose a layout, you're okay. If the module can't, um, then there might have to be some sort of uh, custom code or supporting modules to be able to work with it. Um, so that's the best answer I got. Okay. Anything else? Just about uh, up on time. Thanks for all the awesome questions. That was great. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, guys.